The movie opens up with Star Carter, giving us a flashback to when she first got the orientation of being black from her father, Maverick Carter. She was nine years old at that time, alongside her half-brother Seven, her little brother Sekani, and her mother Lisa, they all seat at table as they discuss. Back to the present day, Maverick walks into the kitchen asking Lisa for his wallet, then he gives her a good morning kiss, this shows us that the couple has good chemistry between them. Star and Seven walk into the kitchen too and stumble on their parents being lovely. Seven calls them too old, while Star finds them cute. They both seat at the table waiting for breakfast. While Lisa drives the kids to school, we get a view of Garden City, their home. The kids attend a college in another neighborhood because Lisa wants them to grow up to be better. Star Carter becomes another version of herself whenever she is at school so she doesn't allow anyone to call her brute. While preparing for gym class, Star tells her friends, Haley and Maya about her cute boyfriend Chris, and how he tried to get her laid. The girls laugh over it and ask Star what she was going to do about it. Later that day, while at her locker, Star sights Chris walking down the hallway, his Jordan kicks got her attention. With Chris a few steps away from her, Star quickly acts like she had no idea he was around. Chris walks to her and places his headset on her ears for her to listen to a beat, but Star doesn't let it stop her from saying her mind. She lets him know she wasn't cool with his attitude and Chris apologizes for his action and tells her he had made the beat for her. He dances to the beat in front of everyone and Star pulls him away to a corner. After staring at each other for some seconds, they kiss, and then Chris makes arrangements for a date with Star, on Sunday. It's Saturday night and Star goes with Kenya to a party in her hood. Kenya sees a girl who said nasty things about her in school and wants to go beat her up but Star refuses to go with her. She sees some other friends who agree to go with her and then she leaves Star alone. Leaning on a wall in a corner alone, Khalil, Star's childhood friend walks into the room. The two old friends exchanges pleasantries and Khalil tells Star about his grandmother being sick with cancer. A gunshot goes off at the party and everyone runs out. Khalil takes Star to this car and they both drive off. As they do, Khalil parks the car at a corner and talks to Star about their childhood, and then he kisses her. Star tells him she has a boyfriend and he lets her know he was already aware, then they drive off again. As they did, a police car follows them behind and asks them to pull over, which they do. Star quickly places her hand out where it can be seen just like Maverick told her when she was nine. The cop asks Khalil to come outside as he was being stubborn. While the cop goes to confirm Khalil's driver's license, Khalil picks up a hairbrush from his car and as he tries to brush his hair, the officer opens fire on him, thinking he was holding a gun. Star runs out of the car with tears in her eye to meet Khalil and the cop places handcuffs on her and sits her on the floor. He quickly calls for backup and requests the weapon, when he finally saw it was just a hairbrush, he calls for an ambulance. With the ambulance just a few meters away, Khalil dies, bleeding on the floor. In the next scene, Star is seated at the station with Lisa next to her. Two detectives walk in and question Star about the incident but focus more on Khalil being involved with drugs than on the incident and it gets Star pissed off. Star's uncle who was also a cop walks into the questioning room and asks Star to go back home. At night, Star has a nightmare about Khalil's death and wakes up screaming. Maverick was right next to her and he helps her go back to sleep. The family sits around the table for breakfast and Sekani lightens up the mood by taking Star's breakfast, making everyone laugh. Later that Sunday, they pay a visit to Khalil's home, and Khalil's grandmother asks Star if she was with him, and when Star told her yes, she thanked her. Chris texts Star to remind her of their date, but Star cancels. Outside the house, Carlos walked with Maverick, Lisa, and Star, and he informs them that Star will have to stand as a witness before the jury this gets Maverick angry and Star anxious. At school, Star extends her anxiety to everyone around her, including her friends, while Chris keeps his distance. Star goes to get snacks with Kenya, and the news about Khalil's death comes up on TV. Kenya tells Star she knows the witness being talked about was her, on their way home, King drives towards them and asks the girls to get in. He tells Star he understands how she felt about witnessing such a scene. He drops Star off in front of her father's store, and then Maverick holds a short conversation with him, regarding Star and the court case. The next morning, Lisa and Maverick argue about changing the neighborhoods for the sake of the children and to stop Star from being hurt by King, after which they all dress up for Khalil's funeral service. They all take a look at Khalil's corpse and Star cries as she does. At the church, Seven's mother arrives with King and calls for Seven to stay with them. April, a lawyer, addresses the people about Khalil's case and the mild punishment given to the officer who killed him. As she returns to her seat, she gazes at Star and that gets Lisa angry. After the service everyone gathers outside the church for s peaceful protest at the station. 
Maverick notices the protest was turning violent and so he takes his family back home. At night, they watch the protest on the TV, and then a knock sounds on their door. Maverick opens it and it was April at the door. She comes in and speaks to Star, trying to convince her to appear before the jury as a witness. Lisa disagrees and asks April to leave. Just before she leaves, Star opens up to them about her second childhood friend, Natasha, who died when they were just 10, and playing in the street. She tells April that the former King Lord was the one who killed Natasha and that she was afraid to appear before the jury because she doesn't want the current King Lord to come after her, so April drops her card and asks Star to reach out when she feels ready. The next day at school, all the students hurry out to protest for black lives, but Star didn't feel okay about the protest as it makes her feel guilty, so she leaves school and calls Carlos to come to pick her up. Carlos drops her off at her mom's workplace and then Star lets Lisa know she wanted to go on TV and talk about the murder. While on air, the host asks Star questions about Khalil which makes her talk about King and his gang, after the interview, the family decided to eat out. As they ate, King shows up, and Maverick meets him outside. They get into a fist fight and then a police car drives by. King and his boys drive off while Maverick remained there. The cops harass Maverick in the name of checking him, and Lisa runs out to show them Maverick's ID as they requested. Seven got pissed and exchanges words with the cop, so the cop tries to put the handcuffs on him, but Seven refuses. Everyone including Star brought out their phone and started recording, and then the cops left. Maverick instructed Lisa to get the whole family to the car, by now, little Sekani was already crying. Inside the car, as they arrived home, Star apologizes to her father for going on TV and blames herself for what happened. Maverick got upset and asks the kids to line up on the porch. He asked them to do a recitation and after they did, he told them never to keep quiet and told Star not to be sorry for choosing to speak up. The next day, Star hangs out with Haley and Maya, but the atmosphere gets heated up as Haley and Star get into an argument over the Khalil case, then Star gets a text from Chris regarding prom. Star eats out with Lisa, and then Lisa shows her the gown she will be wearing for prom. At prom, as Star walked the red carpet, she receives stares from people, and then Chris comes out and takes her to the car, he shows he the video of the interview she had, and then Star comes clean about her connection with Khalil. The two reconcile and Chris offered to take Star back home. As they arrive home, Seven decides to test Chris on some questions to know how black he was. Maverick tries to tip Chris at the door assuming Chris to be a chauffeur. Lisa joins them and welcomes Chris in, then Star introduced Chris to Maverick as her boyfriend. Noticing Maverick wasn't comfortable with the idea of Star dating Chris, Lisa politely thanked him and asked him to come back some other time. After Chris leaves, Maverick demanded an explanation from Star, then she anxiously tells him about Chris, surprisingly, Maverick accepted Chris. As he reaches out to hug his daughter, gunshots ram through the door, then, they all fell flat to the floor. Maverick gets his gun and goes outside but King's boys already drove off. He drops Lisa and the kids over at Carlos, then Seven goes back home with him and they both stand guard outside the house waiting for King and his boys. Star talks with Carlos about going to the jury and Carlos' answer to her question as they spoke infuriated her, then she leaves him feeling disappointed. At jury April talks to her outside, then Lisa hugs her, while Maverick just winks at her then she enters and tells the judge everything she knew about the incident. At school, Haley approaches Star and tries talking to her but the girls ended up arguing again, this time more serious than before as Star scares Haley to the floor with her hairbrush. Chris stops Star on the way and takes her to his car. She cries out profusely in the car, smashing her bag furiously with her fist, then Chris hugs her to get her to stop. As she sobs, she receives a text message on her phone asking her to come to pick Seven up. Chris drives her to Kenya's home, they find Seven severely hurt and bleeding on the floor with Kenya next to him. Aisha, Seven's mother asks Star to take them all with her. As they leave, King returned, so they escape through the back door. On their way to the hospital, they find some people protesting, Star asks someone about what was happening and she got informed that they were heading to the city's hall. Chris and Star quickly check their phones and they realize that the officer who killed Khalil won't be going to prison. They drive to the protest site, and Star asks Chris to take Kenya and her kid sister to a safe place, while Seven decided to stay with Star. Star joins the protesters and takes a Khalil t-shirt from April, she climbs up a car and screams out into the microphone. The officers ignore the protesters and fire tear gas at them instead. The protesters begin running, and a car pulls over and offers to give Star and Seven a lift. Seven complains about his eyes, the man tells them they needed milk to calm his eyes, so Star suggests they go to Maverick's store to get it. After the men help Star and Seven feel better, they leave the two by themselves and go to inform Maverick they were in the store, however, King, 
who was standing across the store, signals to his man to go after the kids. As they listen to a voice note that Lisa had sent to Star, King's boy starts a fire in the store. Seven and Star run to the back door but it was locked, so Star hits on it, hoping to get it open. The old man whose store was close by noticed the fire and run to the store. They see the kids struggling with the back door and then go in that direction. As they try to get the door open, Maverick and his family arrive. He gets the door open, and then King approaches them. As he goes to meet King, Sekani tries to stop him. Sekai screamed, leave my daddy alone, while he pointed the gun at King. The cops arrived and then, with the help of the community's testimony, King got arrested. The family got back together and decided to stay back for the main time, while Seven graduated high school. Star and Haley drifted apart and stopped being friends while she kept Maya and Chris beside her instead. She visited Khalil's home and his grandmother asks her to take the things she needed from his room, as she was about to clean it up. Star finds a wand that they played with as kids and then she smiles while tears fell from her eyes. She takes it back home with her and placed it next to her wand and Natasha's too. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.